Hello and Allah, pod dear friend. My name is Abbas Tamori. Time is 12.14. Today is 8th of September. Continuing to this project of the Seven Valleys, I'm going to be speaking about the third valley according to this writing of Baha'u'llah which is the valley of uh, knowledge let's get on with it as I'm explaining uh, the uh, my understanding of the text I'm also trying to retranslate some of the parts into uh, given extra suggestions it comes to the point that I'm thinking that probably I should put all of this uh, in the website uh, with a marking of my words but you're hearing it you could do that yourself so the value of the knowledge should not be definitely knowledge because knowledge in Arabic or Persian is called elm and uh, this is not called the Valley of Elm in Arabic, it's called the, the Valley of Ma'rifat. Ma'rifat means understanding. But that could be general, that could be Ma'rifat towards many things. Since this is the Ma'rifat of God, it has to be the Valley of Divine Understanding or True Understanding. But definitely not knowledge. Knowledge is something that you can learn. Understanding something that you have to earn it comes with experience whatever book you read you'll never understand love you simply have to fall in love to know it whatever you read of what the Baha'is are taking in Iran in jail right now it's all uh, your imagination but if you're there then only then only then do you understand what is going on so this is the value of really divine understanding as it continues it says it enters the valley of knowledge and comes out of doubt into certitude and turn from the darkness of the illusion to the guiding light of the fear of God his inner eyes will open and he will privily converse with his beloved he will set a jar Ajar, I changed it to open. Ajar means halfway open, you see. Uh, it says open. So he will set open the gate of truth and piety. Uh, piety is a wrong uh, translation. It has to be need. See, uh, niyaz is the real word. Um, it translates as need, not piety. So we continue. His inner eyes will ajar bracket open the gate of truth and piety bracket need and shut the doors of vain imagining he in this station is content with the decree of God and see it war's peace and find that in death the secret of everlasting life with inward and outward eyes he witnessed the mysteries of resurrections and the realm of creation and the souls of men, not the souls of men, of selfhood of men, not their soul really. And with a pure heart apprehended the divine wisdom and the endless manifestations of God. In the ocean he findeth a drop and a drop, he beholdeth the secret of the sea, split the atom's heart and lo, within it thou wilt find a sun. All right. I kind of uh, spoke last time about the fact that these seven valleys is not written as an alternative to be a Baha'i. It's not written for the non-Baha'is that they can do this without becoming a Baha'i. Although Baha'u'llah says the valley of search and the valley of love, on the beginning he says this is what they say. This is what they believe. But when it comes to the Baha'i standard, 
He will say in the book of certitude, after seeking, you should enter the valley of certitude, which is, he says, is the Baha'i faith, the cause of God. And there you can understand love and fall into the valley of love. And as you gradually start to study the faith, and you start to like it and you love it, and as much as you love it, with relatively, relatively, you also earn wisdom and understanding. This understanding is very different because God is not designed, the revelation of God is not designed to teach you really. Teaching is something that you can learn from other men. God does not go in jail kills many thousands of people, sacrifice their life for something that man can do. He would not die to create a formula in science, because we have already done that. Even to the great uh, uh, measure, we have solved even social problem. He comes for something we can't do. So you would have to say, the religion, he is the divine physician, and his revelation is a prescription, therefore. So this is a prescription. When you take it, he feeds you. He doesn't teach you. He feeds you to grow. Also he cures you. If you have shortcoming, if you have sickness, so you can be better. Therefore, after the valley of search, we enter the valley of certitude, really, and then into the valley of love. If you want to go to the highest standard, as it is in the book of certitude. Now, of course, we come to that understanding, as just mentioned what it is. So, uh, there he starts, he says, uh, I'm pointing to that, he says uh, in this part, he says, one of the part of this understanding is that we understand the real need. Okay. He says what? And come out of the doubt into certitude and turn from the darkness of illusion to the guiding light of fear of God. His inner eyes will open and privily converse with his beloved. He will set open the gate of truth and, and need. See? He will open the gate of the truth and need. Not piety, need. This is very important. What is our true needs? Do we know what the true needs are? We are, we people, including myself, we're always either underestimate or overestimate the situations. Either we take it as bigger than what we can solve, or we take it as too much smaller. We cannot point out what it is. Therefore, we always jump from our need into want, to greed. What we really need is, is the biggest secret of man to solve these needs. So many of us, we apologize for ourselves. Oh, I wish I didn't do this. Oh, I wish I didn't do it. How many times do we have to apologize to ourselves about the mistakes that we made? This is why you enter the city of certitude, so you know for sure drinking and smoking is not going to be a part of what you would like. If you're into it, it's because others have, uh, through the osmosis pressure, they have um, basically like a matrix, they have embedded uh, these needs into you, inoculated it in you. Those are not your actual needs. Now, smoking and drinking and whatnot, well, of course, it harms the physical body, but there are a lot of other things that hurt the spiritual and the psyche of us. So many things we think we do need. We don't know, we're not, we're not tuned up. You know, we think we need this, but we don't need this. Our software is not working. You see, we're installed as a human with a software called humanity. It has to work. This is why Baha'i Faith has come to tell us to install this in your head so you can operate your computer better. Because based on what Baha'u'llah tells us on the side, just like a coach, just like a... Uh, teacher, just like a doctor actually that he is, then we can learn about a lot of things that, oh my God, that is not what we need, then that is not what we need, that is not what we need. You know, we think we should lie. Everybody that I've seen lies. Because either they're afraid or they're in the need of something. 
But most of these things that you think is in your need, it is not your need. Therefore, if you know what your real need is, you don't need to lie. And the fear that is the same thing. We fear a lot of things we should not fear. Because of that, we're afraid and we lie. We don't need to. If you know what really the thing is, you don't need to lie from the thing that is truly is fearful. You just need to go away from it. So this is a part that he's talking here in this uh, part that we understand. There are other things he says. Uh, he says uh, in another part, His Holiness says, um, important, um, he says, we prefer the decree of God. He says, he in this station is content with the decree of God. Okay. See, the decree of God, or those things that he tells us in the book and has brought us, we're content with it because we know those are the ones that we really need. See, sometimes, um, uh, sometimes we don't know things. We say, okay, Baha'u'llah says not to lie here. Okay, they asked me questions, I didn't lie. Okay, apparently you think, okay, like in my case, well, I lost the contract, I lost the job. Sometimes my partner, you know, I don't have a partner, but uh, my friend, they say that, oh, Tony, we should have not said this. This guy is not going to give the job to you because of this and that. And that. I said, you know what? In that case, I don't need that job. And it happened a couple of times, you know, that we got the jobs, we should have not got the job. Those things that was true, if it was sold, if it was told, the man would have not be attracted to me and would have gone. But we had sometimes conflict a few times with the customers. We should have told them plain truth on the very beginning. With wisdom. But then he would say, no, I'm sorry, I don't want it. That's good. Then he's not the customer. If you don't say all the truth that you know, and you're not plain about it, then you get it. And you say, oh, I got it. But you actually got something that you should not get it. Why is that? It's because you lied to get it. If lying was a necessity for you to get the job or to get the position or to get it, therefore that thing is definitely going to harm you. So this is where he says in this book from the beginning, the wayfarer in the valley of knowledge and understanding, on the very beginning they know what it seems, what the end is. The guy smokes, the wayfarer here knows this is dying, this is cancer. So beginning a smoke and this cancer, but a man of divine knowledge on the beginning of the smoke he already sees the cancer. In the beginning of the lie he knows this is going to fail. Everybody says it doesn't, you say it fails. Then they say you're telling the truth, you know it because you rise above the dimensions of the people. People need to know from a distance, traveling on the two-plane, two-dimensional world, point of A to B. But a Baha'i or the wayfarer in this mystic uh, traveling, it rises above that second dimension, it becomes at a third dimension. He looked at the beginning of this car and he knows where it ends, and he comes down and tells to the guy, I see beginning and the end of your destinations. It is like that. I'm going to continue here. And the decree of God. And he see at war as peace and find it in death the secret of everlasting life. We see that every day. Even as biologists, they can see something is dying only to something else to form. You know. But in the death is the secret of everlasting life. Um, this is not every possible death, no. Certain type of death, the death that you know that it would have to come to end because your contract is over to stay here and you fulfilled your mission. You wrote your file. You're given a body which is a computer, the hardware. You have a software, an operating system, which is humanity. You have to install on this operation system the, uh, the software that Baha'u'llah has revealed, which is the Baha'i V. If you do that, now you have a file as a Baha'i. You have to write down on that Microsoft Word as you have. In this case, in your file, Mr. Joe or Mr. Abbas, 
you have to write your file, who you are and what you are. What are the things you like? What are the things you don't like? What you write is who you are. Nobody else decides for you. You decide you, you, who you want to be. When you die, that will be you. If it's afraid of certain things, it will be there. And it has a different translation. Sometimes you see a person who's difficult, jealous, or has some stinky attitude. Now you are in the body, covered up in a suit, you don't smell it really. But when you die, and he dies, there's no body around, his soul as so stinks, it's so abhorrent, vehemently. Oh my God, it's ugly that they don't even let him to go to hell. I just kick him out of the death because it stinks their soul that comes with arrogance, jealousy, with cruelty, heavy duty sicknesses. So that's how he finds out in death there's everlasting life because he just knows it. It comes within him. I'll continue. The topic is big, guys. The wayfarer in this valley seeth. This is the translation right now. I'm going to start. After the word seeth, this is what it says. The wayfarer in this valley seeth, in the fashionings of the true one, nothing save clear providence. The whole thing has to change, in my opinion. It should be. The wayfarer in this valley seeth with the eyes of God that in creation there are no estrangement and oppositions. That's what the translation is. With the eyes of God that in creation there are no estrangement and opposition. She translated as in the fashioning of the true one nothing save clear providence. It's not very clear to me. And then continues, and at every moment saith, no defect, it should be difference, not defect, no differences canst thou see in the creation of the God of mercy. So change of word defect to difference. And then she continues in translation, repeat the gaze. This repeat the gaze has been translated authentically by Shobhi Effendi as, not repeat the gaze, but th turn, turn thy sight unto thyself. That's what Shobhi Effendi's translation is. Then she continues, seest thou a single flow? So her word is, repeat the gaze, seest thou a single flow? It has to be changed to turn thy sight unto thyself, thus thou observed any shortcomings. That's the translation. Futur and shortcoming. A single flow, it would be understanding of what it means. But real translation is this. Then continues. He beholded justice in injustice, an injustice, grace. In ignorance, he finds it many a knowledge hidden, and in knowledge, a myriad wisdom manifest. He breaketh the cage of the body and passions, and consorted with the people of the immortal realm. He mounted on the ladder of the inner truth and hastened, hastened it to the heaven of the inner significance no not inner to the deeper significance he writeth in the ark of we shall show them our sign in the region and in themselves this is the translation of the part of the verse of quran surely offenders they're translated differently surely says he writeth in the ark of then this is show translation 
we will surely show them our signs in the world and within themselves. Okay, so change that to the standard of showing. And journey it over the sea of, her translation, until it becomes plain to them that this book is the truth. Change it to, until he clarified unto them that he, capital, he is the truth. So, until it became plain to them that this book is the truth, has to be changed to, until he, God, clarified unto them that he is the truth. And if he meeteth with the injustice, he shall have patience. And if he become and if he cometh upon wrath, he shall manifest love. Okay. Now let's see. Now, I'm going to go to this a story that has been uh, narrated by Baha'u'llah. The translation starts with this. There was once upon a lover who had sighed for long years. The, the beginning of it, there's an omission. Because Baha'u'llah says, it is narrated. Hekayat kardand. This, is, this word is not translated. So it should start with, it is narrated. There was once a lover who had sighed for long years in separation from his beloved and wasted in the fire of remoteness. This wasted in the fire of remoteness has to be changed to consumed with the fire of separation. From the rule of love, this rule of love to change it to overwhelming of love. His heart was empty of. The empty of has to be changed to breath of, patience, and his body weary of his spirit. He reckoned life without her as a mockery. This has to be changed. He reckoned, li he reckoned life without her as a mockery to be changed. He reckoned living in separation, living in separation, as a sedition sedition and time consumed him away it has to be changed to and was extremely angry with whole earth the word afaq means people means horizon also it has been translated by Shogaf and there's a whole earth okay in this case he was just angry with all the people because he was in love and he couldn't get it so, how many a days he found no rest in longing for her? How many a night he... The, the pain of her kept him from asleep. His body was worn to a sigh. His heart's wound had turned him to a cry of sorrow. He had given. This he had given. The, the tense has to be changed to. He would give a thousand lives for one taste of the cup of her presence, but it availed him not. This taste of the cup of her presence, but it availed him not, has to be changed. Moment of union with her, but it would not become possible. Continue, the doctor knew, the doctors knew, no cure for him, and companion avoided his company. Yeah. Physicians have no medicine for one sick of love, unless sick of love really is, should not say sick of love. You know, you're not sick of love. It has to be changed, my God. Okay. For one sick of love, for the love sickness, unless the favor of the beloved one deliver him. No, not deliver him. Give him a hand. Because Baha'u'llah used the word das. That's his hand. Give him a hand. Continue. At last, 
the tree he was the tree of his longing yielded the fruit of despair and the fire of his hope fell to ashes then one night he could live no more and he went out of his house and made for the marketplace on a sudden a watchman this watchman does not really is the word it has to be a policeman he's not even a guard this is police the word is assass assass means police so on a sudden watchman on a sudden a watchman bracket policeman followed after him a broken to run with the watchman bracket policeman following then other watchmen policemen uh, came together and barred every passage to the weary one and to the weary one and the wretched one is the wrong word wretched one no the poor man cried from his heart and ran here and there and moaned to himself surely this watchman which is policeman is Israel don't read it at Israel Israel is actually Israel Israel this is Israel Israel is the angel of death Israel no something else okay which is the uh, title of Jacob okay cried from okay mm -hmm. is Israel my angel of death following so fast upon me oh he is the tyrant of men no he's the tyrant of the country seeking no lurking to harm me not me people to harm people then this has to be changed his feet carried him on the one bleeding with arrow of love and his heart lamented to change this his feet carried him on the carried him on the one bleeding with the arrow of love and his heart lamented change it to the wounded with the arrow of love was running on his feet while lamenting in his heart then then has to be changed till he has the word has to be here it says then he came to change the word came to into rich till he reached a garden wall and with an untold pain he scaled it for it proved very high and forgetting of his life no and forgetting of his life no say instead of forgetting say letting go and letting go of his life he through the he is not written there but it has to be he added threw himself down to the garden again the word is missing garden floor just add the floor at the end if you like it in bracket and there he behold he beheld his beloved with a lamp in her hand searching for a ring she had lost when the heart surrendered when the heart surrendered lover hooked on his Ra uh, ravishing love no just simply beloved looked on his beloved he drew a great breath no he drew a great sigh <coughs> and raised up his hands in prayer crying oh god give thou glory to the watchman policeman and riches and long life for For the watchman policeman was gabriel guiding this poor one or he was esrafil bringing life to this wretched one so now you learn there are three angels in islam too you saw that israel which is the angel of death then you saw gabriel which in arabic or persian is a jebrail this is the angel that brings the message from God inspiring uh, angel and now there's another one Israfil or he was Israfil Israfil is the angel that in the day of the resurrection 
he sounds on the trumpet to say that the new religion of God has arrived. And Esrafil, which she could not find the word to translate it, fortunately is translated by Shoghi Effendi in the Book of Certitude, and he says that it would be called Seraph, S-E-R-A-P-H. So, or he was Esrafil, within brackets Seraph, bringing life to this wretched one, poor one. Indeed, his words were true, for he had, he had, I change it, it was found many a secret, not secret, mysteries, justice, mysterious, secret justice, no, mysterious justice in the seeming tyranny of the watchman or policeman, and seen how many a mercy he laid behind the whale, out of wrath, not out of wrath, or oppression of so in the whale behind the whale of oppression the guard had led him who was athirst in love's in love's deserts well okay the guard had led him him who was athirst in love's desert, I change it, let this athirst of the desert of love to the sea of his loved one. No, his loved one, no, just the beloved. And lit up the dark night of absence, not absence, separation, with the light of reunion. He had driven one who was afar into the garden of nearness had guided an ailing soul to the heart's physician now if the lover could have looked ahead he would have blessed the watchman the policeman at the start and prayed on his behalf and he would have seen the tyranny as justice but since the end was wailed to him he moaned and made his plaint in the beginning, plaint in the beginning. Yet those who journey in the garden land of knowledge, no, in the divine garden of understanding, because they not see, because they observe the end in the beginning, see thus they perceive not see thus they perceive this is my translation instead of the word see say thus they perceive peace in war and friendliness in anger no not friendliness peace in war and reconciliation in anger those were the proper translations my english actually is not good at all god helps me somehow i say these things so, we are discussing in the whole story here. Bahá'u'lláh turns tell us that there are many, many stories like that in the Sufis that they're saying that one of the signs of the understanding is that uh, uh, the wayfarer, the one who tread the path, God to understanding, uh, they see the beginning and the end and end in the beginning. How would that be possible? Again, I give an example that if you're on a plane watching somebody on a two-dimensional world, you see it's starting to go from the city of Toronto to the city of Winnipeg, whatever it takes them 30 hours to get there. Uh, if you're up on the plane, well, you could easily see where he goes, the beginning and end is clear to you. Okay. Now, there are two types of mathematics, the Euclidean mathematics and the non-Euclidean mathematics. The mathematic Euclidean mathematics, which is what we do, we can make many, many exact same similar uh, articles, so they're exactly the same. In the nature, it comes very rarely, very rarely. 
uh, it seems that this is one of the reasons that they said there's one God, there are not two creations that are the same. So there's a different mathematics. This is non-Euclidean mathematics. In there, there's no except an exact round shape. There's no oval, there's no exact triangle. In reality, in the non-Euclidean mathematics, which is the natural mathematics, one plus one does not become two. If you say, I saw Abbas and I saw Hossein, so there were two people in the room, a non-Euclidean will ask, two of what? Two of Abbas or two of Hossein? So one and one does not become two. If you say there are two apples on the table, they say no. One and one apple does not make two apples. Two apple of what? One apple is smaller than another apple. Two apple of 100 grams or two apple of 90 grams. So you see, because in the nature there are no two things exactly similar, they cannot add up as such. Also, you can say that uh, 1 plus 1, 1 plus 1, 1 plus 1, 1 plus 1, go to what? 7 billion and you say is equal to 1. 1 of what? 1 humanity. So there's a different approach. In this approach, which comes out of wisdom, lots of it you can see right in the writing. For example, the writing tells us the cause of God we prevail. Why? Because we've seen it in the past and we believe in Baha'u'llah, we recognize who he is. Therefore, we're sure, it doesn't matter what enemy do, we know they're going to fail. See, that is how we know, with the help of Baha'u'llah. But we can go further and refine our own understanding of the circumstances and the situations. As a lot of us older people, uh, younger people, they come, they tell us they want to do in this and that and that in our wisdom, we know this is not going to work. We know it because we have experienced it. This is how when we look at the lower people, uh, younger people, less experienced, we can see where they go and what happens at the end. You see? But that about everything. Now you could be young, but become a Baha'i, get into the love with Baha'u'llah and his writing, then you gain understanding proportionally to your love, you will be your understanding will raise. Based on that you could see a lot of things. We were in uh, uh, Pickerel Lake. I had a house. Uh, I was asking, uh, it was in London Drive, and Thunder Bay was asking, um, was it in London Drive? Yeah, it was in London Drive Embassy Court. I think I was asking um, uh, 145 or something. The, money, well, the house was not selling and we had no more money left. And uh, my wife was going banana, and all the Baha'is they say, I'm going crazy. And uh, the boys, I remember Dave and others, they were in Pickle Lake with me. Uh, the time comes, the guy called me from Blues Realty, says that we can't sell too many the house, we have to raise the, we have to bring the price down. I said the reason the house was not sold because it was too cheap. I changed the guy and uh, brought another person. I asked 154 and the house was sold in two days. So, uh, people, other Baha'is, I remember, including Varananis, he was thinking that I, either I read too much book or I have some kind of a hero problem, that is why I do all these things, because they like to compare you to what they think they are. But I remember Dave said, no, I think, uh, I think Abbas is right, we will come, don't worry about nothing, we really have no money, the house sold, the house sold and we got all the money. Of course the money went in account, believe it or not, in a couple of months, uh, my wife was tired of me spending the money in the teaching. She transferred the money, all of it, to her brother in Australia. The guy did not send a penny back. And we had to go on welfare for the first time in our life in Canada. So, those things can happen, isn't it? Where was I? I'm going to discuss 17. I'm on the page 17. I know there's a page 18 as well. All right. 
continue into this valley and I'm going to bring uh, my explanation of some of this stuff. I guess it will suffice. Uh, continuing with the quotations. Such is the state of the wayfarer in this valley, but the people of the valleys above this see the end and the beginning as one. Nay, they see neither beginning nor end. Wow. And witness neither first nor last. Nay, rather the denizens of the undying city. No, no. Of the eternal city. The word is Baga. Baga could mean undying, but really it should be eternal city, not undying city. Anyways, of the eternal city who dwell in the green garden land, see not even neither first nor last. They fly from all that is, is that is first and repulse all that is in the last. For these have passed over the world of names and fled beyond the worlds of attribute as swift as lightning. Thus it is said, absolute unity, I put up it in the bracket, divine unity, excluded all attributes. I added within the bracket from him and they have made their dwelling place in the shadow of the divine essence. Mm. So, we say God is kind, God is merciful, God is compassionate. So many attributes. So, we look at the spectrum. There's the beginning ultraviolet and infrared many many lights you know there are 12 15 lights you can measure it but all of them are really one there are only one white light that breaks down in the spectrum and becomes so many different frequencies in reality the truth is the same thing all this beginning and end, it says that they go beyond that. They don't even see first and last. They can't point, okay, this is the beginning, this is the end. They all see one. Because all attributes that we see really are nothing but the reflections in the spectrum of love. Love is one thing, just like the white light. It reflects itself into different actions that we do in a different color of attributes. If you are my size, when you are up in the planet, you could see west and east, the beginning and end. Imagine I become so big that the whole planet is nothing but a little bean in my home. What do I see? Where is the beginning and end? So this is a reference to going higher and higher and higher. The farther away you go from the earth, the smaller that you see, to the point you don't, you don't see it. And that is what he goes on. So this is one explanation for you. Now, he's referring to Khaja Abdullah Ansari. Haji Abdullah Ansari is uh, from Harat. They call him the Peer of Harat, the Elder of Harat. Harat is a city in Afghanistan. And uh, this man has some prayers. The Baha'u'llah referred to him generously to show that to us that these are, these are worthy people of reading their writings. Baha'u'llah doesn't need to refer to them because they said something astonishing. No, Baha'u'llah just has this truth that he applies it and he sees who comes into the spectrum, he brings their names because he is the day of reckoning. So it, things are getting reckoned. Who is said something right or wrong? So it continues. It says, Wherefore, relevant to this, Haja Abdullah, may God the Most High sanctify his beloved spirit. Don't take it too high. He says, sanctify his spirit. Maybe his spirit is not sanctified. It says, may sanctify this spirit. 
had made a subtle point and had spoken an eloquent word as to the meaning of guide. Thou art on the straight path. In the uh, prayer, Islamic prayer, five times prayer, it says, Ihdina sarat al mustaqim. Ihdina means guide us. Sarat means the path. Mustaqim means straight. What does that mean, a straight path? Allah says, path, which is show us the right way. That is, honor us with the love of thine essence. Mm -hmm. That we may be freed from turning towards ourselves and towards all else save thee, and may become wholly thine, and know wholly thee, and see only thee, and think of none save thee. Nay, these even mount above this station, where it is said, love is a whale betwixt the lover and the loved one. That is deep now. We're getting better. So, what is Khaja Abdullah trying to say is that, okay, we're looking for that white light, but sure you show us blue light and red light, and I see many lights. That means there's a God, we know him as the kind one, as the uh, generous one, as the giving one, and so many other. These are attributes defining something, and that would be the essence, and these are the attributes. So it says, I don't want to go through kind ones and kindness. I don't want to go through generous one and generosity. I don't want to see from the generosity of this man, therefore God must be generous because this man shows generosity. He says, let's, let there be a shortcut that we get out of these names, calling your names and calling, giving your attributes. Let's go directly to your essence, to the real kahuna, you see. That's what it means, Khaja Abdullah is trying to say. But Baha'u'llah says something deeper yet. This is really deep. Love is a veil betwixt the lover and the loved one. Okay. al muhabbatan hijab bain al muhabba wal mahbub. Love is a veil, he says, between God and you. What else can you have except loving God? What else? Baha'u'llah says, even a loving God is a veil. Somebody was asking me, I think Ian Kluge in British Columbia, what the hell does this mean? Uh, I think it's the answer I would have given him, I don't remember, but this is the answer anyways. Baha'u'llah says, as long as there is you, and then there is God, then there is a relationship. So there's two of you, you and God, therefore there is a relationship. If we take the relationship out, what will happen? Then you have to become God. When you're God, you have no relationship with yourself, such as loving yourself. When you're loving him, then you have not become him. You love your teacher. You love, if you're a musician, you love Wolfgang Mozart. You love, you love Wagner, you know. You love Beethoven, Strauss. You love him so much, so much that you finally will learn music, la 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 la. You become him. When you become as good as him, you perhaps don't love him anymore. Because love was a need indicating of your inferiority. Now you are him. When you become him, at that day the journey ends. This is what Baha'u'llah says later on. Journey ends. Let's read and then I'll get back to you. My explanation. 
Love is a veil between the lover, betwixt the lover and the loved ones. More than this, I am not permitted to tell. Please change this. More than this, I have no command. That's better. At this hour, the morn of knowledge, which is understanding within bracket, had arisen and the lamps of wayfaring and wandering, not wandering, treading are quenched when you become him the journey is in it's the end of the way no more journey there's no seeking no more. there's no love you are it that's it this is really a description of the last valley the seven valleys why is it brought here it's because the more you understand the revelation of God, the more you get closer to Baha'u'llah. You can come to the point that so much you understand and acted upon that you become Him. Which would we call it in the Baha'i faith? The spirit of faith. It is a copy of the Holy Ghost. It's not it, it's not Him originally, but it's a copy. And it's an exact copy too. If he's the real one, you're his picture on the televisions. How could you say they're any different? Well, they are different because the reality cannot, you know, come into the TV. But you have cleaned yourself enough that you are not TV, can receive Baha'u'llah on your screen. People can see Baha'u'llah in you. It's not original, but it's exactly a real, it's, it's, it's like going in the internet. It's a relation to the reality at that point you're under seek the seeking is over so the more love you have the more you get deeper at the end of the day the result of all the understanding when it comes to the top is that the seven valley isn't it now there is uh, some translation here is made of a poem that i changed it Veiled from this was Moses, though all strength and light, then thou hast no wings at all, attempt no flight. Good, okay. I changed it. Contemplation of Moses with all his skills and enlightening was veiled. Do not fly thou without feather. Okay. So... This is a translation of that. If thou be a man of communion and prayer, soar up under the wings of assistance from holy souls. No, holy souls, change it to the guardians, because the word is olia, oliam's guardians. That thou mayest behold the mysteries of the friend and attain to the lights of the beloved. Verily, we are from God, and to him shall we return. This phrase, which is a translation of the word of Quran, verily we are from God and to him shall we all return, is been translated by Shoghi Effendi as we are gods, not from God, we are gods, and to him shall we return. After passing through the valley of knowledge, which is understanding, which is the last plane of limitation. The wayfarer comet to the valley of unity. Okay. That's back to my note. So I explained right until the point that the highest degree of understanding. The faith, really. Recognition of God, we call it. In the Baha'i faith, we don't call it faith. We call it recognition. Uh, there's three ways. One is to believe in God. Simple. Many people do. Now they believe in manifestation of God. Very few believe in Baha'u'llah at the time. But there is another belief which is the hardest of all. It's to believe in yourself that you are God 
Ooh, that would be very difficult, isn't it? To believe that you are the guardian of God. The word says guardian. Because of the Baha'i faith, <clears throat> we all heard of the principles of the <clears throat> and continuous revelations that Baha'u'llah is not only a revelation, continuous forever. Okay? Actually, there is such a thing as continuous guardianship in the Baha'i faith too. Page 300 in the Guide of Light, Light of Guidance. Shogh Effendi says, after Abdul Baha, there shall be guardian to lend of the Baha'i faith. Just like God, he says, that use Baha'u'llah to talk to us. Baha'u'llah will use the Baha'is to talk and to do his work in the planet. So guardians are always in the Baha'i faith. So it's very hard for a person to know that he has a mission. The very humility and humbleness becomes your enemy. You think it is not humble for you to say you are guardian. But of people, they need it. You have to assume the position. Then God will tell you you are or you're not. But you have to assume the position first. Okay. So to believe in yourself is very, very hard. Okay. So <clears throat> what's my take of this uh, valley? so-called, which by the way Baha'u'llah does not even talk about it, but it comes to another tablet, which is not translated in English, it's called Jawahar uh, al-Asrar, the, uh, the, the, the essence of the mysteries, this is actually uh, the book called Author uh, Galama al I wonder if there is an English something on the book. Yeah, it's uh, this, you know, the book. Volume 3. And the very first book is Jawahar al-Asra. This part is not translated in Arabic. He doesn't talk about even about the value of uh, Ma'rifat or understanding. He just simply Baha'u'llah jumps to Tawheed. Because this seven, as I said before, is what they, Muslims, people of the past, I said, Baha'u'llah was not confined or limited himself to this. He tells us what the way uh, it's supposed to be, but he himself introduces things like value of uh, certitude after search, before love. And after love doesn't go even to understanding, he jumps into Tawheed, which is uh, unity. We try to explain in there the understanding, because they're all nothing but understanding really. So it's my take. I have three things to think about this for myself. The first sign of understanding that we have to come divine understanding that everything in the universe from what we want and what we don't want everything ends to the spirituality. There is a evolution of the motionless into motion, motion into moving into plants, animals, humanity, prophet of God, gets into thinking, thinking comes into attributes. It's the whole thing is a process that how matter turns into a spirit. Once you know this, then you have a shortcut to make. Don't wait till you have all the money like Bill Gates and then start to give. At that point it's not giving. You're obliged to. You're forced to. If you knew it, you would have not got the money on the first place anyways. What is your business to make so much money out of the people and go back giving it to them? And unfortunately, it's not exactly giving either. It's like a man whose pocket has holes in it and his money falls down and people pick it up. Sure, when people pick their money, their life changes, but that's not counted your generosity. You're oblivion. Your too much money is killing you. You're literally 
in a house that you are immersed into gold. You've got to throw it out in order to survive, to live. That kind of a uh, is an evolution of giving. It's not a decision of giving. You can evolve into giving or you can decide to give. That's different. So that is why it's not necessarily giving can become uh, fruitful. But end of the day though, everything that we need, it will become a spirituality. All the money in the world that you want is to become happy. Well, then happiness is not, as, it's not material at all. Why it makes you happy? Because you're comparing yourself with other people. No, I'm bigger than others. This fact that I'm bigger than others, than better than others, does not going to create happiness. If all the people are ready to listen to you and order from you, in no time you get tired of it. It's a job to order people around. It's a job to be superior. You know, I don't like that job at all. I like to certain people that I like to tell them something. I'm not going to go to everybody and move here, move there. What am I? You know, I don't want to be the CEO. It's difficult. So, if all the wealth in the city, the, all the people are dead in the city, would you live in that city even one night? No, you take your car and you go outside of the city in some you know, wide, vast area, sleep in your car. You don't want to sleep in any of them. It's a spooky. And you know there's nobody there, everybody's dead. Still don't want to do it, live in it. So, money and all this is not going to bring happiness. You think happiness comes because you're superior than others. That's not going to bring happiness. A very bad basis for happiness. So, if you want to attract people willingly to you, well, that does not take material at all. We could just create some art, some music, something else and people will be attracted but even that is an entertainment but if you're a very nice man beautiful attitude helping hand you don't have to have certain skills for that anyone can do that you see the entire mankind respect you love you protect you people are spiritually intended to be intended created to be so when they see as a spiritual man they respect that person even thieves they don't beat him even bad people respect it. But that doesn't take material. So it's a spirituality. If that's what you want to be, you want to be recognized. That's what we want to be, recognized. Okay? Do it in a spiritual thing. People will recognize you. But me, I don't want to be recognized even by people. I want to be recognized by Baha'u'llah. My taste is high, brother. You know, Baha'u'llah recognizes me. Abdul Baha recognizes me. People of high, you know, they've gone too high, they recognize me. That gives me pleasure. But if people around, when they know nothing and I say something and they come and appreciate me and I tell them that one guy was saying that you are the greatest man of the universe, la 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 la. I told him, cut it short. Explain to me why do you think that? He didn't have enough explanation. <sighs> I told him you're suffering from a disease called infatuations. Okay? You have no reason even why. You can't give me a reason. Simply, you want to bow down in front of me. I'm not interested in that. So, number one, I guess, is that the way this universe is made, the way who we are, finally the joy is in being a spiritual, which simply means to have those attributes. This is not uh, another beard or another, you know, uh, clown, you know, uniforms, change of voice, you know, nothing like that. Simply kindness, generosity, you know, giving, caring, serving. That has a great immensity of the pleasure. It's so much of those who receive this from you are full of pleasure. Imagine how much pleasure you get. So that's where it ends. This is number one of the pillar of understanding, in my opinion. The second things that we have to see to come to the understanding that we are a part of the whole. You see? 
I am not me. Every human being, including Charlie Manson, is a part of humanity. He is a part of me. Okay, he's the asshole of humanity, but he has to be there. I have no business to judge him. I have no business to shun him. I have no business to beat him up. I have the business to show him kindness when he sees me. Hug him to see if I can affect him. But some good, beautiful attributes. Why? Is because there is another species of humanity. It's not me and you. We, we are too small, we don't see it. Like a little ant climbing on the Mount Rushmore on the picture of the on the face of uh, Abraham Lincoln, can the ant knows what the picture of uh, Lincoln is? That no. If you're too small, you could be sitting on a huge face, but you still don't know what it is because you're too small and this is too big. You don't know it. So there is another species of humanity. It is the humanity itself. From a distance, all of us on the planet, all together, are one being called humanity. Each one is a cell of a higher being called humanity. That is the one that doesn't die. It has a beginning but has no end. It's the child of God. Me and you are the cells of it. So if the cells in my hand does not know there's a brain, there's an eye, there's an everything else, he thinks he can just attack the other hand as a competition. His left hand, he says, this is the right hand, you don't need to use this hand, use this hand. Well, that's just stupid. My brain says, guys, what are you doing? If I, in fact, doing that, what am I? A crazy. So when you're attacking another person, you are crazy or extremely oblivious. Do not do that. This is a measure of understanding. If it is bad, then we have to fix it. Why? Because when the whole body is fixed, my individual cell, one part of my cell cannot say it is a path. But if this cell understands he's a part of the whole thing, then he serves in a structure. The whole body can live 70 years along with the cell. Doesn't die, stays there. But if a cell doesn't think, then he put it on the floor in one second, two seconds, the cell dies. No life on its own. This is a second measure of understanding. Why do we need this? Because none of these attributes can be earned without people. Kindness to what? To stones? To trees? To animals? Somewhat animals maybe. But kindness, then you need another human being to show kindness in order to get kindness. You need another human being to show generosity, to get generous. When a position, a situation comes, arises that you show generosity, take it as a gift from God. Immediately show generosity. You're gaining right there. Money goes into your character, into your loyal bank, not a royal bank. Immediately get it. It's an opportunity to be good right now. Search around to see where you can help. Or you can do something. Anywhere. Always your eye has to be open. Who needs you? What could you do? And make it that they don't know it is you. You see? Once they know it is you, then you got your recompense. The moment they say, thank you, that's it. God says you received the thank you and you liked it. We can't pay twice. People, you are told you thank you and you agreed with it. That's all you get for what you've done. But if people don't know you have done it, even, then somebody has to get paid. They didn't pay you because they didn't know it's you. God will have to pay you differently, isn't it? This is why Jesus said, don't let the right hand know what the left hand did. Be nice like that. Do not let people to know the secret of your goodness. Do not turn it into fame. I told you one of the heavy duty problem of the spirituality that stops the man from growing is fame.
people say so many thank you, show so many gratitude, and you get so much, you know, uh, uh, into exuberance of receiving these thank yous from the people, that will halt you down and you'll never go up. People shouldn't know it is you. So, this is what it means from the beginning to see the end, you see. You have to know the whole picture. The third take that I have from this is a very strange one. What did Baha'u'llah said? He said, love is a veil between you and God. A simple psychologist can tell you, if a being is intelligent and has a willpower, that being will become lonely if it is the only one. In that case, God and us are the same thing. He's intelligent, so is we. He has willpower, so is we. We have one little one, he has a big one. But essentially, it's the same thing. He's lonely. You see, this is why everything's created. So you get out of the loneliness. He doesn't have a God, does he? Does he pray to another God? Does God have another God to pray to, thank him? No. If you're really following God, you shouldn't have a God either. As long as you have a God, you haven't got there. This is why love between you and God, Baha'u'llah says, becomes a weight. You have to know your him. <clears throat> you have to know. It's a total recall. You have to know it is you. It is you that in the earth is coming in this form. Would you believe that in yourself? No. But if you did, you are truly him, then, brother. This is not narcissism of the Western psychologists, you know. They're full of it, okay? No, this is not that. It's not about self-appreciation or even receiving. It's about a fact that you know, okay? But there's one thing, though. You may not need to have a God. In following the God, in obedience to your God, since he doesn't have a God, you have to get to a point that you also do not need a God. Your teacher does not need to go to the school. So you have to reach to a point like your teacher does not need to go to school. He doesn't have a teacher. So you have to get to a point that you do not need a teacher. Your father is old enough, like me, does not have another father. But you have one because you need him. But you have to reach to a point that so you don't need a father. Like your father, you're fatherless. Like your God, you're godless. That there's one point though. One big catch. Although God does not have another God, but he does have a lover. He has a beloved. He is in love. Or something. Who do you think that is? What would an intelligent being with the willpower who creates things would be in love with? He is in love with his creation, because he made them, isn't it? Walt Disney is in love with Mickey Mouse. They say Alexander Dumas, when D'Artagnan died, he cried. He killed him in this story. You know, he cried and said, they died.
the entire story of the creation is the story of a lonely being. If you were to be living billions of years, you would be lonely and finally you would clone yourself because you're lonely. But to no avail, your son is billions and trillions and sextillions and Googleplex years younger than you. There is no way for him that he could know that you are his father. So you have to create some kind of a shortcut for him to get to you faster, to get out of time. You put him in time, bring him the behind fates so he may fly to the timeless zone and the time is not required, then bang, he comes in front of you. So you talk to him, he can understand you. You see? So, we do need to have a lover. So, everything goes up and turns around. These are the cycles that Abdul Baha speaks of in the Some Answered Questions. You search, you go to love of God, and the love and dissipates and become a will, then you become God. He says the search is over for you as a human being, but for you as a God, the search is starting now. You want to find people like yourself. That's all Baha'u'llah is here to teach, because he likes people to turn him, to become like him, to communicate. This is why he says so much he talks about loneliness. I couldn't find one to be with. Yes, there is no God but me, the lonely one in the jail. We think we know him. <laughs> We think these great martyrs are his companion, understands him. Not at all. I could enjoy the fact that they're trying. Yes, God is in love with man. God is in love with man. With us, with you. With me, with all of us. So? But you know what we do? We tell him God can you give me money? God, can you give me my wife? God, can you this? God, can you this? We have gone to God. Employ him as our servant to fulfill our wishes. And he's looking at you. He says, when do you want me? When do you want me? No, you just tell him, oh no, give me money, give me this, give me that. Nobody wants him. Everybody wants something from him. He says, am I that ugly? That no one wants me? They just want things from me. What a destiny. God has what a tragedy, what a loneliness.